Now we're recording. Um, I love that Netflix is giving an opportunity to um, to do a variety of actors and 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 directors to showcase their talents. So that part is cool. But man, somebody scripts. And I, I, the reason I want to talk about this is because the one that I watched last night, I think, sets us up, especially women for such failure and it and it constantly fills us with regret so the one that i watched last night she was getting ready to marry one guy and her guardian angel shows up and takes her you know to an alternate universe where she's with her best friend who's the love of her life and you know and then at the end of it she goes back to her world and then the guardian angel comes back and is like well you have a choice do you want to stay in this world here or do you want to go back to the alternate universe that you were just in so she chooses to go back to the alternate universe right we all knew that that was going to happen um not to mention the fact that her dad's alive in that universe so hello right but here's here's the problem with that we watch those things and we sit and go like if you have if you have not resolved the issues in your life if you have not resolved your life path then you're going to watch stuff like that and be like how come this can't happen to me oh why can't i have the time machine and go back why can't i change anything i wish i had made all those different choices i wouldn't be here right now <laughs> you know and so you end up in that place when I when I first got married, um, my marriage was worse in the beginning than 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 it became as as I grew into the marriage and found my voice. It became a different beast. But in the beginning of the marriage, every issue that I'd seen my parents go through like manifested itself through me. I'm I'm the eldest, right? And so I came in, I got married at 23, a month before my 24th birthday. It's 23. You know, I had these teachings in my head and, and it's, it's nothing wrong with the teachings themselves, but how I applied them for a man who wasn't ready for that role or position and had his own demons. And I slipped into this role of, demure quiet housewife who had no opinion for fear of making her husband angry and upset it's very not the person that apparently most of you see here because people are like you i'm like yes me i would cry i would cry all the time wishing i had a time machine willing to give up anything to go back in time to the time of an ex-boyfriend that I had to the time of one of the guys I was seeing after that who wanted to marry me to the time of this to the time of that I I, I was so um regretful because I was in so much pain and I was it made me I was not happy regret does nothing for us. And when we watch these movies, so I watch these movies now from a very different lens. So first of all, I, I've, I have the, the luxury of having been married, whether it, however it worked out, right? And I have the luxury of having had children. So I've fulfilled, I guess, some of those things. At this stage in my life, Right. Well, first of all, I, I couldn't have any more children, even if I wanted to, but I don't. Right. My youngest is 15. I'm good. <laughs> um, and I don't have a desire to get married either. So when I'm looking at these at these rom coms now, I'm no longer looking at it from this from this space of, you know, I, I wish I could find a love like that because I don't want a love like that. Right. So now I'm looking at it through a different lens. Like I watch them. I watch all of them. I find them very, very funny and heartwarming. And I cry like the one that I watched last night. I cried because it was it was it was poignant and beautiful in places, you know, but I'm also looking at it from the larger societal lens. And I'm looking at what women in particular are watching and what messages are being given to women about what romance is. 
about what it means to fall in love with someone. What it what it means that what it means this man should act like or be like. And I'm also looking at it through the lens of a brown woman watching these comedies, which are largely um, Caucasian based, right? You know, there are a few on there. Like I watched one that was that was Kenyan, that was cool. Like that one was that one was funny. It was good. It was good. I have to remember the name of it, but it was nice to see. Uh, it was Kenyan. It was in Kenya. Like it was in English. And they, they did speak some of the dialect in woven into the movie. So it says, you know, like you're watching and they're talking to each other. Then one of them would slip into like dialect and they would do like a subtitle thing or the person would repeat what the person said so that you would know what they said. Um, and that was cool because I got to see like Kenya, like a city is that, well, not, not Kenya is a country, right? I, I think there were, were they in Nairobi? I don't remember, but they were like, you know, like you got to see the city, you got to see them working. Like it looked just like LA, you know? So I was like, that's hot. So I try to find more of those types of, of rom-coms, right? But if you're, if you're watching these and you're expecting the men to act like they do in these rom-coms, especially if you're a brown woman, you are gonna find yourself in a hell of hurt. First of all, these people are fake. They're fake. And I think that that's what we really need to understand when we're watching romantic comedies. Watch them, enjoy them, but don't ever walk away from them wishing you could have a love like what someone scripted that doesn't include real life problems and issues that's wrapped up in 90 minutes of sugary sweetness. Because when you take that and you try to apply that to your life, then will you find yourself saying, I can't find, I can't find a good man? Well, because you're looking for someone that literally does not exist. Even the actors who are playing the characters are not like that. Right? And think like a man. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I like that. I like that movie, right? I think it's very funny. Um, I think it has some good points to it. Not a fan of that whole 90 day thing. Not a fan of thinking like a man, um, but I, 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 I enjoyed the cast camaraderie you know, and, the, and the chemistry. But if you're looking, first of all, did you see how dysfunctional some of those relationships were? Like seriously, which one of you wants, wants, to, be, uh, uh, wants to be with the Kevin Hart dude, right? Uh, which one of you wants to be, you know, and I get it. They were trying to, it was stereotypical, right? You know, there was the, the guy, Terrence J, I think his name, who was like the, the, the mama's boy, you know, you, you know, who was uh, dating what's her face. But, but some of y'all are out here looking for like, and then you see that and you're like, oh, I can, I can, I can change that just like in the movie. No, it's scripted. It's scripted. And, and, you know, I remember watching Jerry Maguire many, many years ago. Um, still a really cool movie. And I like all these movies. And I remember at the time when I watched it, I was, I was one of those that was really into, into what was scripted. How old is that movie now? I don't remember. You know, and when and when he walked in to the to the book club or whatever, and Renee Zellweger standing there, and he's just like, "You complete me." I was like, "Oh, I want that. I want to complete a man." You know, when I was watching one of the other rom coms, and I think I mentioned this on in my other lives, and the man was just like. I can't, I don't want to, I can't, what do you say? I can't imagine myself happy without you. At the end of Boomerang, notice how it's all the men saying this, by the way. I, I'm trying to recall a rom-com where it's a woman doing this. It's always a, it's, it's like a, there's a very typical formula. At the end of Boomerang, when, when, when Eddie Murphy goes to Halle Berry and, you know, after she's, you know, pissed, 
right? And he's like, I can't breathe without you. And I don't tell me you didn't, because I saw it too, and I was like, oh, oh my God. Right? You watched it, and you were like, yes, I want a man who can't breathe without me. Oh, God. He loves her so much. Y'all know. <laughs> no, no, no. That's codependency. <laughs> I don't want a man who can't breathe without me. So first of all, let me tell you, I had that, you know, cause I thought I wanted it, right? I thought I wanted it. And in my marriage, I had someone who, who, who didn't want to make any moves without me, literally, who also didn't want me to make any moves without them. And there was a lot of fear that came along with that fear of loss. Cause, cause if you can't breathe without someone, if they become your oxygen, your air, you don't ever want to lose them. You must have them. They must stay with you. Ladies, if you believe that this man has given you the best sex ever, that he is responsible for it, oh, you will cut a bitch if she tries to take that from you. If she tries to take that dick from you, oh, you're going to lose your mind. Because in your mind, he did it. He made you feel this way. And if someone comes along and takes it from you, there's going to be hell to pay. And that's how a lot of us operate in our relationships. Now, do you hear how that sounds? Do you hear how crazy that actually sounds? This person makes you feel a way. And so if it is lost, you have nothing. You have nothing. First of all, no one makes you feel anyway. No one does that. You, what we think is, is, and a lot of us think that the great sex is the reason for it and the way that this person makes us feel inside and, and all of that type of thing. First of all, that's very selfish because we're concentrating on how the other person makes us feel, which means we're really concentrating on how they create the chemical cocktail in our brain of, en of endorphins and dopamine. It's like getting high off chocolate, you know? And we think that the person did this and it's this chemical cocktail that's running through our body that's causing our hormones to do a thing that makes us go, ooh, yes, I like this feeling. And that feeling is addictive. That feeling becomes addictive. And then we need that feeling all the time. So a couple of things happen. One, you stay, you get into a relationship, you got that feeling, right? And then when it goes away, you think the relationship must not be working because you don't feel that high anymore. You don't feel like, ooh, all that. Because your hormones have settled in now. Y'all done, y'all done settled into each other, right? And so, and so it's not that you did you don't love each other. Because those are hormones. Love's not a hormone. And that's where we get confused. That's where the rom coms have it wrong. The hormones that you feel, the excitement and the lust and all of that ooey gooeyness, that's one thing. And love is another. And so when that wears off, what you're left with is do I love this person? And a lot of people are getting into relationships with people they don't actually love. They are just high off the chemical cocktail. And, and the chemical cocktail doesn't wear off for some time. So you start dating someone, you get engaged a year later, you get married a year after that. Y'all are two years into the chemical cocktail. It hasn't even had time to settle in by year five, six, seven year itch. It settles in and that's like, you wake up and it's like, I don't feel the same about you anymore. Of course you don't, because the chemical cocktail wore off. But it doesn't mean you don't love the person. This is why it's important not to make the person the focal point of how we're feeling. Back to the sex for a minute. Ladies, I really want to tell you that The man is not responsible for your good feeling sex. You can have, 
you can have good feeling sex because you're just in Tantra, they teach us this. There are other modalities that teach it too, but in Tantra, we learn this, that it's it's your body being open and receptive to the energy. It's not the person. Now, there are people who can inspire more openness and more receptiveness in us. That's true. That's still not the same as love. Love is, is a lot of action. Love is, is doing for someone, taking care of them, even if you're not getting anything out of it at that point in time. Love is not being taken advantage of or run over or being a martyr. Love is not, I gotta do everything myself. That's not love. Love is not about keeping score. I did this today, you should do that tomorrow. You know, we have to split this 50-50. That's a roommate. That's a roommate you're having sex with. It's not love. So rom-coms give love a really bad definition. And then they add on to what the, these feelings that you can have sitting there. I mean, if you're not careful and if you're not clear, you can watch that shit and get depressed. What? Or watch it and start looking at the person next to you like, oh, you're not like that person in the movie. See how they treat her. I want flowers like that. Like it didn't just say you want flowers like that. Rom-coms will have you sitting in a pool of regret if you're not careful. How come I can't go back? How come I can't make my life different? How come I can't in this one the in, in this one in the in her real life the best friend that she that she loved had died and in the alternate universe the best friend was alive. Look, there's no you're not going back. Just you're not going back, right? I mean, you might look you know, you could watch something like that and decide to call up your first love and, and, and because you know that that person is single and you two strike it up again and who knows, you've grown and matured and voila, right? You can do that, but there's some action that was taken there. You're not gonna dip into an alternate universe where you go back to when you were 17 years old and all of a sudden now the two of you are riding off into the sunset together from 17. No, you're gonna start from 43 right? With all the life experience that the two of you have gained between 17 and 43. And then you have to get to know each other all over again, right? But yeah, when you're watching these movies, watch them with all the salt, not like the grains, but literally the whole thing. Don't watch them hoping that your life is like this. Don't watch rom-coms looking for this type of love. Don't, don't watch them wishing that you could find a man like that who does not exist, especially for the women. Because I need you to understand it's scripted. Someone is taking the best fantasies of a woman and they're putting them on screen for you to watch. He does not exist in that form. It doesn't mean that you can't find the partner who is perfect for you, but you're not gonna find a perfect partner. And being in love with someone isn't about whether or not someone completes you or is the air you breathe. And the songs are so beautiful. Tell me how I'm supposed to breathe with no air and all of that. and. You better the fuck breathe without your partner. You better know how to breathe all on your own, all your own oxygen, and that person know how to breathe on their own, all their own oxygen, and y'all are coming together to breathe in a united way. But you're not waiting for someone else to feed you. Because when you do that and you get into this codependent thing, that's when, especially in monogamy, that's when shit turns left and people have to start instituting all these rules to make sure that there are guidelines to make sure that no one takes their air. You see how that flows into that? Especially for women. Men, y'all do it too, but I'm a woman, so I get normal. You know, he's your heir. You can't live without him. 
he's the only one who can make you feel that way turns into I say so you're flirting with the cashier yeah but I didn't I mean you didn't have to be that friendly with her she might get the impression that you like her well I mean because then the next time you go into the store you know she's going to be trying to talk to you oh and and you see where that goes because you know but if you know that you have your own air, <laughs> that was cute you having that conversation with the cashier. <laughs> I can see why she finds you attractive because God knows I do. Because mm. either way, your air is good. If that man for some reason decided, hurtful as it might be, that he needed to find his fulfillment with the cashier, you will be sad but he took nothing from you because you fully went into it understanding that you were enjoying your time with him. You fully went into it as your own full grown ass person. You fully went into it knowing that you had your own damn air to breathe. You fully went into it knowing that you were complete without him. And so while the loss of the loss of the future that you thought you were planning with this person hurts, you don't got to run around trying to chase nobody down or beat nobody's ass or, you know, do all kinds of crazy shit with him. Because you know what? Maybe the field is just being cleared for someone else. The rom-coms will have you fucked up. Thinking that love and co thinking codependency is love will have you fucked up. Thinking someone else completes you and is the air you breathe will have you fucked up. It is not the same. So I want you to watch these, enjoy them. You know what, you know, if you're watching this, go back and watch, like go watch a rom-com, go check it out. You know, and like watch it from this lens now, just just pick one, pick one you used to watch, pick one now, whatever. Watch it and, and, and look at, look at how they interact with each other. And look at that, that necessity to, I must, I'm that, that grabby, I must have you, you know? And think about how that would play out, you know, in real life. Oh, excuse me, this is making me burp this morning. And lastly, don't, don't regret the loves you've lost. Everything in this life is a journey and everything in this life is a classroom and it's a lesson. And this is really, I'm just gonna have to keep this braided for forever, but it's a, it's a journey. And sometimes people come into our lives to show us what love is, to teach us what it's not, to help us grow. It's always to help us grow, but it doesn't mean that we were meant to be with that person because you're not supposed to be forever with every person that you feel you love. Just because you love someone doesn't mean they're supposed to be yours. So don't regret anything from the past. Take the beauty of it, take the lessons of it. See how you can apply it to your life today and don't look at those rom-coms as a blueprint for how your life is supposed to be or how your love is supposed to flow. All right, that's it for today. I love you all. I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.